In this video, we will be looking at changing the subject of the formula. The first formula we're looking at is V equals U plus T. The quantity V is the subject, so we need to make U the subject. In order for us to do that, we will need to isolate the quantity U. To isolate U, we need to remove the T that's connected to it by addition. And so what we'll do, we will subtract T from both sides of the equation. So on this side over here, we'll subtract T. And on this side over here, that is the left of the equal sign, we'll also subtract T. So what this does, it allows us to isolate U because T, that is positive T minus T, cancels out to zero. And so on the right hand side, we'll have U. Now U is isolated. And on the left hand side, we have V minus T. So we have U as a subject. In other words, we can re rewrite this as U, which is what we have here, is equal to V minus T. And so this is our solution. Let's look at the next question. So we have a similar formula, but this time we have V equals U minus T. And we want to make U the subject. So we're transposing the formula for U. Now, in this case, T is connected to U by subtraction. And so in order for us to isolate U, we have to remove the connection by addition, which is the reverse of subtraction. And so what we will do is to add T to both sides. By adding T to minus T, we'll be able to isolate U. But what we do to one side, we will also need to do to the next. So we'll add T to the left-hand side of the equation. And so minus T cancels out plus T. And so what we'll have on the right-hand side is U. And on the left-hand side of the equation, we'll have V plus T. And so my formula is U equals V plus T. And this is the correct answer. Now in the third question, we are transposing V equals RW for R. So V is a subject currently. We want to make R the subject. So how do we do this? To make R the subject, we ask the question, how is R connected to W or vice versa? Well, R is connected to W by multiplication. So to remove W, in order to isolate R, we will use the reverse of multiplication, which is division. So remember, we are trying to isolate R and we're trying to remove the W to do that. So to remove W, we will divide by W on both sides because W is connected to R through multiplication. And the reverse of dividing, multiplying by W is divide by W. So W into W goes once. And so we're left with R times one, which is simply R. And R divided by one is still R. And on the left hand side, we have V over W. And so our solution is R equals V over or V divided by W. R is the subject. The fourth question is to transpose P equals. And let me just differentiate between these. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll put a, a dash over the P that we have here. And so we're trying to make this P the subject. In order for us to make this P the subject, what we'll need to do is to isolate it. So let's rewrite what we have. We have P with a dash over it, H, P, G. How do we make this P the subject? Well, we'll look at how H and G are connected to P. Both H and G are connected to P by multiplication. Remember, H, P, G expanded is H times P times G. 
And now remember, the order of, of, of multiplication does not matter because we get the same answer should we rearrange these. And of course, we can rearrange these to have P at the beginning or at the end. So for instance, we can have this as H, G, P because it's still correct by to say H times G times P as it is to say H times P times G. Okay, so in other words, I could write this as the P with a hat with the dash over it and put H, G in front and put the P at the end. Now, in order for us to get rid of the H, G, Again, remember, HD is connected to P by multiplication. And so get, we get rid of the HG by division. And we do that to both sides. This allows us to cancel out the HG. HG into itself give us 1. And HD into HD give us 1 again. And so we have P on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, we have P with a dash over it divided by HG. So we can say P is equal to the special looking P over HG. And this is our solution. The next question is to transpose I equals V over R for, and we have two parts. Part one is to make V the subject in one instant, and the next instant is to make R the subject. Now, there are several ways in which we can actually make V and R the subject. But we're going to stick to the balance method in this example video. So we have I equals V over R. Now, in order for us to make V the subject, we will need to look at how R is connected to V. And R is connected to V by division. So to remove R, which is in the device, which is in the denominator as a divisor, will multiply both sides by R. Now what this does, it allows us to cancel R on the right hand side. So we're left with simply V. Now R into R is one, so we have V times one is V. One times one is one, so V over one is simply V. And on the left hand side, R times I is RI, or in alphabetical order, we could say IR. So V is equal to IR. Now, in order for us to make R the subject, let's rewrite the given formula or equation, and we want to make R the subject. Now, to make R the subject, we can decide to get rid of the R first from the right-hand side, and so we'll have it on the left-hand side. Remember, when we transpose to make V the subject, we end up with what? That V is equal to IR. So notice that to find V, we can simply transpose the R to the left-hand side, and from division, it becomes multiplication. So we have I times R. That's the transposing method. Next, what I'm going to do is to isolate the R because we want to make R the subject as requested. Now, I is connected to R by multiplication. So to isolate R, we remove I by division. We do that to both sides. So I goes into itself once, and so we have R equals V over I. Swapping sides, R is equal to V over I. Now, there's another way we could actually do this. We could say I equals V over R. We could put the I over 1, and there's something called cross multiplication. Once we have two fractions equal. And so we can multiply I by R and then multiply V by 1. So we call this cross multiplication have an equal sign between two fractions. And so I multiplies R to give us IR, and V times one will give us V. Now this allows us to go right ahead and find R. In other words, make R the subject. So I'll divide both sides by I to cancel out I from this left and right hand side, 
And so I'll have r equals v over i. Swap in sides, again, we have the solution. Let's look at the next problem. We want to transpose f equals v divided by 2 pi r. For the first part, we're looking to make v the subject. So let's write the formula. Now again, in order for us to make v the subject, we want to get rid of the denominator. And to do that, we look at how the denominator is connected to v, of course, by division. And so in order for us to remove it, we will use multiplication. Now consider that 2 pi r is in the denominated position, so it's really 1 over 2 pi r. That's the value of 2 pi r in the denominator with a 1 on top of it. Of course, I'm talking about the value of 2 pi r. So if we want to get rid of the 2 pi r, we multiply by the reciprocal. So we reciprocate this fraction and put the 2 pi r on top and put the 1 beneath. So multiply the fraction by its reciprocal, meaning we upturn to get the reciprocal. Multiplying by the reciprocal will actually give us 1 because 2 pi r into itself goes once, into itself here goes once. So this is the idea that I'm talking about. We really multiplying. When we multiply this side of the equation, our formula, by 2 pi r, what we're really doing is to multiply 2 pi r by the reciprocal. So 1 over 2 pi r times its reciprocal will allow us to cancel. And we do the same thing to the other side. Since we multiply this side by 2 pi r, we'll multiply this side as well by 2 pi r. And so this gives us v equals 2 pi r f. Swap in sides, we have the solution. Now, of course, we could have done this, put f over 1 and cross multiply. And so we have f times 2 pi r and v times 1. Since what we're trying to find is v, then we'll say v times 1, put it that right away on the left-hand side. So v times 1 is v. And then we'll multiply the f by 2 pi r, which is 2 pi r f. It's always best to keep the, the value 2 or any number at the beginning. So we have 2 pi r f. And that's v. Cross multiplication, quite a neat trick. Okay, so now we're trying to make r the subject. So let's rewrite the formula again. f equals v over 2 pi r. Now, of course, this was an exam question, and we already make v the subject. It's easy to just simply use this, to, and then we could actually find r quickly. But let's start from the beginning again. So what I'll do again, I'm going to use a cross multiplication formula. And I'm going to say f times 2 pi r is... 2 pi r f and 1 times v is simply v cross multiplying because we have two fractions equal the equal sign we have this fraction which is f over 1 and this fraction which is v over 2 pi r now this allows us to have no denominators and since I'm trying to find r in other words make r the subject I'm going to look at how 2 pi and f are connected to R. They're all connected by multiplication because this is simply one quantity, as in one term. When you multiply this out, you get one value. So I can remove 2 pi and f by, I can move 2 pi and f by division, 2 pi f. And this allows us to cancel 2 with 2, pi with pi, and f with f. All goes once. And so we have R remaining. But what I do to one side, I do to the other side as well. I'm going to divide by 2 pi f. We do not divide by r because we want to have the r remaining as we have here. So r equals v over 2 pi f. And this is our solution. Next question. We want to transpose v equals the square root of t divided by m. 
So we're going to transpose for t in the first instant, and in the next, transpose for m. So let's rewrite the formula. v equals the square root of t over r divided by m. Notice that the square root symbol is over the entire quantity t divided by m. So the first thing we want to do is look at how all the variables are connected. And if you notice that t divided by m as a quantity has been square rooted. So in order for us to remove the square root that's affecting the quantity t divided by m, we will need to use the reverse of square root. Now, what is that? Square. So we're going to square both sides. So I'm going to square this side, and I'm going to also square this side. Now, when you square a square root, it cancels out. So what we have remaining is t divided by m. And over here, we'll have v squared. Now, of course, we can do this step, the next step, in several ways. All right, now, we want to make t the subject. So I'm simply going to multiply both sides by what? Guess. Think about it. What am I going to multiply both sides by in order to make t the subject? If you said m, if you said m, then that's correct. So multiply by m on this side and also multiply this side by m. It doesn't matter if I put the m after the v squared or before because out of multiplication doesn't matter. And so this allows us to cancel the denominator m with the numerator m. And so what I have remaining on this side is simply t times 1, which is t. And 1 times 1 is 1, so t over 1 is simply t. And m times v squared is v squared m, or we can say mv squared. Swapping sides, we can just write the solution as this. Now what we could have done here when we reached this part, which was as an uh, alternative method, is this. I'm talking about when we reached v squared equals t over m. What we could have done was to put the 1 underneath v squared. So we have two fractions equal and multiply by um, numerated by denominator. So because we're trying to make t the subject, I'll just go with t first by saying t times 1 is t, by the equal sign, and v squared times m is m v squared. And right away we find the solution. Now let's look at part two, which is to make m the subject. So I'm going to write the formula again, t over m. And again, before we can actually get to t over m, we need to get rid of the square root. And so we're going to square both sides, which is reverse of square root. And square cancels square root. And so we have v squared equals t over m. Now, of course, I think this method is much faster. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put v squared over 1. So we have two fractions equal. And that allows me to multiply numerator by denominator. In other words, cross multiply. Now, since I'm trying to find, I'm trying to make m the subject, I'm going to go with m times v squared, which is m of v squared. And then 1 times t, which is simply t. Now, we have no denominators here, which is great. Because we're now able to go right ahead and make m the subject. Now we look at how v squared is connected to m. v squared is connected to m by multiplication because this is actually m times v squared. So to remove v squared we use division. Now you recognize that, by now you should see that or recognize that once you have a product in the numerator, as in two quantities being multiplied, you can cancel out one of the numerators with the denominators as long as they have a common factor. So in this case, v squared and v squared, the highest common factor is v squared. And we're actually multiplying m by v squared. So long as we have multiplication in the numerator, as I said before, and we're dividing, we're able to cancel out. So v squared cancel out v squared. And so we have m equals, and we leave this as t over v squared. Because these are unlike terms, so we cannot simplify. Um, there's, no high, there's no common factor besides 1. So we have m equals t over v squared. Okay, so now let's look at the next question. Okay, so we have two parts here. We have to evaluate um, 
L once we you know we're given the values of G and T. So that's part B, by the way. So in part A, what we want to do is to first of all make L the subject. But as we can see, we have what as a subject? We have T as a subject. So let me just do this right over here. So let's rewrite the formula. T equals 2 pi and then multiplied by the square root of L over G. Now notice that the square root of L over G is being multiplied by what? 2 pi. Because this is actually 2 pi multiplied by, right? The way this is written, it can be a little confusing. It seems like 2 pi is actually the, the type of root, but no. This is actually 2 pi multiplied by um, square root of L over G. So the, to remove the 2 pi, we're going to need to do what? 2 pi is actually multiplying this quantity, the square root of L over G. So to get rid of it, we use division. So we're going to divide over here by 2 pi and divide over here as well by 2 pi. Now what this does, 2 pi cancels 2 pi. And so we have T over 2 pi equals the square root of what? L over G. Okay, so what do we do next? Can we cross multiply? No. Why is that? Because we have this side being square rooted. So we need to remove the square root because notice that this quantity, L over G, is being square rooted. So we need to get rid of that square root because the square root is affecting every other term. So to get rid of the square root, we're going to use square. So we're going to square both sides. Now we can't just put a square on T alone just like that. We have to square both sides. So what this does, it allows us to cancel off the square root with square. And so we have t over 2 pi, all squared, equals L over G. Now remember, the goal is to do what? Make L the subject. Okay, so what are we going to do? To make L the subject, let's, we probably can simplify this, or break out the brackets. So what we can say, well, look at this, t over 2 pi, to be squared is actually t over 2 pi times t over 2 pi. Remember when you're squaring what you do? You multiply the quantity by itself. And so we know t times t is actually what? t squared. And 2 pi times 2 pi is actually 4, since 2, 2 is 4, and pi times pi is pi squared. Is there faster we could have done this? Well, we could distribute the square. So we could say t to be squared divided by, and 2 pi to be squared will be 4 pi squared, since it's 2 pi times 2 pi. Okay, now we want to make L the subject. So what are we going to do? Well, we could cross multiply, that's for one. Or we could say, well, we're going to transpose the G from the denominator to the numerator. And so we can simply put the G where T is on top of the numerator. And that's an easy way of doing it. But you might not be able to compute that in your mind right now. So let's do it the longer way. Let's look, consider the fact that we have two fractions equal and we can cross multiply. So since what I want to find is L, I'm going to go with L first. So L times 4 pi squared is 4 pi squared L. What equals sign? And G times T squared is G T squared. Now, keep our eyes focused on the left-hand side. We're trying to make L the subject. So we ask the question, how is 4 pi squared connected to L? Of course, by multiplication, 4 pi squared is multiplying L. So to get rid of 4 pi squared, we'll need to divide by 4 pi squared. I remember what was said before is that because we are multiplying on in the numerator, it allows us to cancel one of the factors in the numerator with that in the denominator, as long as they have a common factor. So the common factor we have is the highest one, which is 4 pi squared right, which can be divided into itself. So 4 pi squared itself goes once, 4 pi squared itself goes once, and we're left with L. And we cannot simplify the right-hand side, so we leave it as G T squared over 4 pi squared. Now, someone may argue that we could have just left this and put the G next to it outside, but I think this is quite fine as a solution. Okay, now let's look at the next part. 
we want to evaluate. What are we trying to evaluate? We want to evaluate G. Well, we want to evaluate L actually, so my bad. We want to evaluate L. So evaluating L given the value of G, T, and pi. Okay, so since we want to evaluate L, we already have L as a subject over here, so we're going to just take that. L equals G um, T squared all over 4 pi squared. So in order for us to evaluate, what we need to do is to replace variables with values. Okay, our quant our, we can say constant with values too, right? Because pi is really a constant, and the constant they want us to take pi as is 22 over 7. So let's replace the g. g is actually 10. And t is to be taken as the same as r, which is 22 over 7. So we're going to put 22 over 7 in bracket, close bracket, and then we're going to put a square outside of the bracket. So this is g, which is 10, and t in the bracket, 22 over 7 squared. Then we're going to put 4. Then pi, we, take, we have to take pi as what? 22 over 7 as well, close bracket, and squared. All right, not sure why we're taking t as same as pi, but that's what we're given and we work with it, right? And then we're going to simplify this. So let's do that. Well, obviously, since we have 22, 7, 22 over 7 to be squared, notice that we're multiplying that quantity, 10, by, by what? 22 over 7 to be squared. We're also multiplying 4. We also multiply 4 in the denominator by 22 over 7 to be squared. So since we're multiplying, so what we have on top is our two factors. On the bottom, we have two factors as well. The common factors in 22 over 7 to be squared can be cancelled out with itself once. And so we're left with what? 10 over 4. So we could have simplified here, but just let's continue. We're going to divide the denominator by 2, numerator by 2, since they have a common factor of 2. Let's leave us with 5 over 2. Now, 2 goes into 5 twice. I remain once. In other words, 5 divided by 2 is actually 2.5. So L is equal to 2.5 or 2.5. And that is our solution. Let's look at the next question. Now, we want to transpose the formula R equals the cube, the cube root of the quantity 3v divided by 4 pi. So let's rewrite the formula. r equals the cube root of the quantity 3v over 4 pi. Now, just like square root, we use square to, to get rid of that square root. To get rid of a cube root, what do you think we need to use to get rid of a cube root? That's correct if you said cube. So we're going to cube the cube root. In other words, raise it to the third power, and that actually allows us to cancel the cube with the cube root. And so because I cube the right-hand side, I need to cube the left-hand side as well to keep it balanced. And so r cube is equal to the quantity 3v over 4 pi. Now remember, we're trying to make the subject, which is actually v. Okay, so what I can do to get v as subject, we need to get rid of this 4 pi. So I'm going to multiply 4 pi on both sides. Or we can actually put it over 1. That's another option. In fact, I think that's an easier option. So let's do that. So we're going to multiply 3v by 1 since I'm trying to find a quantity v. So it's easier to have the v on the left-hand side. 3v times 1 is 3v. And r cubed times 4 pi is 4 pi r cube. Okay, keep in mind that we're trying to make what? V the subject. So to isolate V, I need to ask the question, how is V connected to 3? And that's by multiplication. Coefficients are connected to the variables by multiplication, because this means 3 times V. So I use division by 3 to cancel out the, the 3. And so I have V equals 4 pi r cube over 3. And that's the solution. Okay, so let's look at the next one. V equals pi r squared h. You can see that these are popular formula, volume. Okay, transpose V equals pi r squared h for h and for r. 
Let's start with the first one, which is for H. I'm trying to find the height here of a cylinder. Okay, so let's go V equals pi R squared H. Now we want to find H. We want to make H the subject, in other words. And this one is quite straightforward because pi R squared is connected to H by multiplication. So we multiply pi times R squared times H. So we can actually get rid of the pi R squared right away by dividing by pi R squared. We do that on both sides. So pi cancel pi cancels pi, R squared cancels R squared, and we are left with H. And H is equal to V over pi R squared. Again, we can clearly see that we are multiplying all these quantities. So pi is multiplying R squared, multiplying H, and so it's easy. Once we're multiplying in the numerator, we can cancel by the denominator as long as we have the same factors or a common factor. So we know that h is equal to what? v over pi r squared. That is our solution. Next. Okay, so it gets a little more challenging. So now we, we're actually at this point where we have what about four variables to, to, to make the subject. Okay, <laughs> let's start with one. And we have the very complicated formula, looking formula, which is P equals MG plus MV squared over R. So we only have part of this formula being a fraction. Now, if we're trying to make M the subject, a question students may ask is, which one of these M's? Well, my response, or any teacher's response to that is, well, both actually. What we're going to do is to make both become one. And how do we do that? We do that by what do you think? Well, let's see. Well, let me just tell you. We do that by factorizing. But let's let's continue though. Let's see how we're going to get there. So in order to make m the subject, we need to bring these m together as one. Okay, so what I'll do basically, since we have both m terms on the one side of the on one side of the the equation, what I'll do, I'll basically simplify the right hand side of this equal sign into one term. Well, let's see if we can actually do that. And so we're going to say, okay, P equals, let's go draw a line. This, the LCM of one and R is simply R and one goes into R one. Well, one goes into R, R times. In fact, we're dividing R by one, which is going to be R. So we're going to multiply that R by the numerator, which is MG. So that's M G R. Divide the plus sign. I'm going to divide the LCM again, which is this R by this R. So R divided by R is 1. So that, that I'm going to multiply that 1 now by MV squared, which is simply MV squared. Okay, so this allows me now to actually factorize out the M because we have both M terms in the numerator of the fraction. So I can factor out M. When I factor out M, what am I left with within the bracket? All right, so M times what will give me MGR. Of course, that's going to be GR. And M times what will give me MV squared, and that's V squared. So I just basically factor out the R, the M, sorry, factor out the M from the numerator. And what I did was to basically divide both terms by M, what I factored out. So when I say MGR divided by M, the factor that I took out, what I'm left with is GR. That was, that's what goes within the bracket here. I want to take the MV squared, also divide by the, common, the factor that I took out, which is M. M cancels M, and I'm left with V squared. And again, I'm able to cancel because M is multiplying V squared, so I'm able to cancel M with M. Okay, so that was clear. And so what I'm going to do next is to try to get the M that I have. Notice I only have one M here, not two like here and here. So because I only have one M in this formula, this step in the equation now, I should be able to make this M the subject. So in order for me to do that, I will need to get rid of the denominator first off. So there's several ways we can do this again. I mean, I could simply put this P over 1 and then cross multiply. 
or I can just simply recognize that this R in the denominator is really what? One over R. And so get rid of it, I use a reciprocal, which is R over one. So I can multiply this by R over one and multiply over here by R over one as well. So what this does, cancel R with R, and I'm left with what? P times R, which is PR equals M. I'm left with GR plus R squared in bracket. Oh, this is actually a V squared, my bad. This should be written properly. Yes. So GR plus V squared. Now I want to make M the subject, but notice collectively, what I have in bracket is actually multiplying M. I have a binomial two term expression multiplying M. And since this quantity GR plus V squared collectively is multiplying M, I can get rid of it by division. GR plus V squared as a quantity is multiplying M. It's in M times this quantity here. So I'm able to cancel this quantity that's multiplying M with the denominator quantity of itself and also divide this side as well by GR plus V squared. So this gives me what? This gives me M equals PR divided by GR plus V squared. And that's the solution, the first solution. Okay, now here's a question. How do we make R the subject? How do we make R the subject? Okay, so what I'm going to do, since we lack in space here, I'm going to write the formula for M. M equals PR over GR plus V squared. I have M as a subject there. I'm still going to create some space by um, erasing what I have here. Okay, so let's make R the subject. All right, and now to make R the subject, what I can do again, we can actually, um, let's see how I can bring, can do this. Probably there's several ways I can do it. Perhaps I can bring this MG over to the other side and figure how I can actually make R the subject that way. Okay, so let's do that. Now, if I consider if I make this MG into a fraction, I put it over one, and simplifying, I might end up with an R in the numerator as well as denominator. So I don't want to have more than one R's. So I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to actually get rid of this MG. Transpose it to the other side, it will be P minus MG equals MV squared over R. But rather than using the transposing method, I'm going to use the balance method to be consistent. Okay, so let's do that. Now I can say that, well, since I'm trying to find R, so I'm going to consider the, the entire term, which is a fraction, which is mv squared over r. First off, let's focus on that for the time being, that this quantity here is connected to mg by addition. So I can get rid of mg by subtraction, and I'll do that to both sides. So I'll cancel out mg, and I'll have that p minus mg is equal to mv squared over r. Okay. So now, what do I do next? Well, I can make this entire term uh, expression over here into one fraction. And what I can do, I can actually cross multiply now. So I'm going to consider this as a numerator quantity and cross multiply. So what this gives me is that, since I'm trying to find R, right? I'm trying to make R the subject. So I'm going to say R times P minus MG, I'm going to leave it as that. P minus mg. I'm not going to expand it or anything. And then 1 times mv squared, which is mv squared. So I'm going to leave it in this form, product form. In other words, r multiplying this quantity, p minus mg. Now, since p minus mg is connected to r by a multiplication, I can get rid of the p minus g by division. So this quantity that's multiplying r in the numerator can cancel out with the denominator since you have a factor in the numerator of p minus g, mg. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, divide this side as well by p minus mg. And so this leaves me with what exactly? It leaves me with r equals, as you can see here, r, since p minus mg cancels out p minus mg. 
So r equals what? mv squared over p minus mg. And that is my solution. Okay, so now we need to make v the subject. Okay, so this is, let me just write this other formula. r equals mv squared over p minus mg. Okay, so now we're making v the subject. Notice that v is part of this fraction here. Again, perhaps I could make one single fraction out of this, but I think I'm going to go ahead and actually get rid of the mg. Okay, so that's for a reminder, let me just use the balance method. Um, so I'm going to subtract MV, mg here on both sides, like as I did in the previous um, question, simply because v is part of this fraction, just like r is part of this. So this cancels out. I'm left with p minus mg equals mv squared all over r. Now, the reason why I was able to get rid of mg, because mg is actually added to the entire remaining expression, right? mg is added to mv squared over r, which is a fraction. So whatever is affecting everything else, we can actually remove first. And that's something we want to also bear in mind. Okay, so now we have mv squared over r. So keep, bear in mind what we're trying to do. We're trying to get this v by itself. Okay, so if you look at it this way, that, um, well, we could actually think about transposing, but I'm not using that method. So I'm going to actually do is to make p minus mg a fraction by putting it over 1. And since what I'm trying to find is in the numerator, which is mv squared, where the v is there, I'm going to actually multiply 1 by mv squared, so I can actually get the v on the left-hand side. So I cross-multiply, cross-multiply. Again, I can only cross-multiply because I have an equal sign. Now I'm going to multiply r by p minus mg. r times p minus mg. In fact, I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to multiply it out. Now what I'm trying to find again is what? Yeah, I'm trying to make v the subject. So I look at how v is connected to the other variable, which is by multiplication. In fact, v squared is connected to m by multiplication, not just v, but v squared. So I'm going to try to get v squared first off, isolated, and then I can remove the square. So v squared is connected to m by a multiplication. So I can get rid of this m by division. And I do that to both sides. Divide both sides by m. So since I'm actually multiplying in the numerator, m times v squared, then this m can cancel m in the denominator, and I'm left with v squared is equal to, in the numerator, r times p minus mg over m. Now to get rid of square, what do we do? Well, do you recall that to get rid of a square root, we use square, well, to get rid of a square, we use square root. So I'm going to square root this side, and I'm going to square root this side as well to keep it balanced. But the purpose of square root in this side is so that the square root will cancel out the square. I'm left with v, and so v is equal to the square root of r times p minus mg over m. And that's the solution. So let's write that at the top. So v equals so we're finished with these three. Let's find the last one, which is g. Okay, so let's write the equation, which is a formula actually. We want to make g the subject. 
Now, since what I want to find is within a part of this term, which is G, part of MG, I'm going to get rid of this quantity here. And this quantity, MV squared over R, is adding to MG. So I'm going to look at G with what is connected to directly, which is the M, and focus on MG and to make it the subject. Then I can actually get rid of the M after. So M is really now the coefficient of G in that context. So we want to get rid of this MV squared over R. So to get rid of MV over squared over R, we recognize it's connected to MG by addition. And so to get rid of it, we use what? Subtraction, correct. So we're going to subtract the fraction itself. Okay, let's see what happens there. So we're going to subtract MV squared over R from the original quantity, MV squared over R. That cancels. And we do that to both sides. Yeah. And so we have P minus MV squared over R, P minus this quantity, which is a fraction, equals to what? MG. Okay. Now, it gets a little bit you know, tricky here because we are thinking, okay, what do we do from here? Well, the idea is that we want to make what? G the subject. So we can say we're going to divide both sides by what? By, by M. Since M is connected to G by multiplication, and dividing by M will allow us to have G by itself. Okay, so let's go right ahead and do that. Dividing by M divided by m. And so m cancels m and left with what? g equals p minus mv squared over r all divided by m. All right, so the challenge here is that we are seeing that we have a, a numerator that perhaps can be simplified. And so we do not want it to look like this. It's too, look, it looks too complicated. So we, want, we can actually simplify this right hand side a little bit more. So let's see. G equals. All right. So what we can actually do, let's do it. We can actually get rid of this M that we have here by multiplying by what? Now M is M over one. So we can multiply by reciprocal, which is one over M. And so we can also multiply this side by one over M. This allows us to cancel out the M. And so we're left with what? G equals one over M. Multiply by P minus MV squared over R. And we can distribute this. So let's distribute. So G equals, now 1 over M times P is going to be P over M minus um, 1 over M times this fraction. Okay, now let, how about the M, P over M? Well, M over 1 over M times P. 1 times P is P, and M times 1 is M. So you can see how we got this. Let's do this the next part using distributive law. Because we have, multi we, have, we have subtraction in the bracket. As long as you have subtraction or addition in the bracket, you can apply this really property. So now 1 over M multiplies, multiplies what? The negative MV squared over R. Now because we're multiplying, we're able to cancel out what? denominator with numerator and so we're left with negative r squared over uh, it's actually v negative v squared over r so it's going to be what going to be a negative well let's have a negative here already which is just what we're looking at here right so we have minus v squared over r all right and then of course we can perhaps um, simplify this further by um Find the LCM of um, M and R, which is just simply M times R. So we simply do not know what the values of those quantities are. Now, M into MR is what? Of course, if we have MR divided by M, we're going to get R. This will cancel this. So that R times P is PR minus, and we divide the same MR, which is LCM again, by this denominator, R. We're left with M. And so m times v squared is m v squared. Okay, and so this is our 
solution. Looks better than how it was presented over here. Next question, we have V equals four over three pi r cubed. And we wanna make r the subject. Okay, first off, when we look at this, we've seen that r cubed is connected to four thirds pi by multiplication. So we can get rid of this guy over here, four over three pi. Because before we can get, r, get to r, we have to make r cubed the the subject okay so how we're going to do this well let's let's first off look at the fact that 4 over 3 pi r cube is same thing as saying 4 over 3 multiplied by pi r cube so we can actually put this over 1 and this will give us 4 pi r cube over 3 so in other words because just shift this 3 in the denominator position so let's do that. I think it will be much easier to work out afterwards. So this will be 4 pi r cube over 3. And now we can actually put v over 1 and cross multiply. So since what I want is over here, which is the r, I'm going to just do that first, which is going to be 1 times the 4 pi r cube. So that's 4 pi r cube. Since so anything times 1, I give about the same thing. And 3 times v is simply 3v. Now, again, we're trying to get to r, but r is you know, tied up with the cube, so we're going to get rid of the 4 pi first. Since the 4 pi is multiply, multiplying r cube, this cube is only affecting r, so we can't remove the cube first because it's only affecting r. But the 4 pi is multiplying r cube itself, so we can actually get rid of that first. We should get rid of that first. That, that goes, and we are left with what? We're left with r cube is equal to 3v over 4 pi. Now, what's the next step? The next step is for us to actually get what? To get to r. Okay, now the cube, as I mentioned before, is only affecting r. And now we need to make that r look like an r. Okay, so to get rid of this cube, what are we going to do? Okay, of course, I'm sure you heard, get rid of cube by cube rooting. And so the cube root will cancel cube. Can't use a square root, of course not. A square root will only cancel square. So if we had, for, for instance, if we have r squared, we'll use square root. We should usually have a two there, but we don't usually show it. So let's go back to this. So a cube root get rid of a cube, and so that's cancelled, and we have r equals. By the way, I should actually cube both sides. So I have to make sure the 3 is right by the radical symbol. So we have r is equal to the cube root, the 3 by the radical symbol here, over the quantity, well, of the quantity 3v over 4 pi. That's our solution where R is a subject. Now we have two types of R, we have capital R and common R. In the first instant, we want to make the capital R the subject. And so we're going to have 3R over capital R minus common R. So notice that the capital R we have here trying to make the subject is in two places. So what do we do? Well. We want to get them together and factor out the r to have it only in one place. And so we can do that by simply um, getting rid of this denominator. We, it's always good to get rid of the denominators. We can do that by multiplying both sides of the equation by r minus r, capital R minus common r. Okay, so again, another way to do this is simply making two fractions. So we have v over 1 equals the, the fraction 3r divided by um, common, capital R minus common R. So now, here's what I'm going to do. Cross multiplying these guys, we have 3R times 1 is really 3R. And V times R minus 1 is V times R minus 1. Well, minus R, actually. Yeah. So now, how do we get these two capital R's together? 
Well, this one is in brackets, so we need to expand the brackets using the distributive property. Since we have a minus inside a bracket, whether it's a minus or plus, we can expand using distributive property. So it's V times R is going to be RV. And V times common R is V is common RV, or we can say VR. But the idea is focus is really on this, on this um, capital R here. Now, if I take this, if I take this, um, this RV over this side, what will happen is that we'll have a negative term over here just by itself. But, you know, we can do better by taking this R term over this side and taking this one over this side. Yeah. Okay, that's not the balance method. That's a transposing method. So, you know what? Let's be consistent again and use the um, balance method. Okay, so... The idea I'm going to use is to, I'm going to subtract, um, I'm going to get rid of this minus VR from this side by adding VR to both sides. And so this cancels out. And so what I have here now is what? It's going to be 3R plus V, come on, letter R equals R, R capital R, V. So now I need to remove this 3R from this side. It's connected to VR by addition because it's a positive sign in front. So we're saying it's really VR plus 3R. So I'm going to get rid of this 3R by subtraction. So we have VR equals, that's the common letter R, RV, capital R, minus 3R. So now we can actually factor out the R. Let's factor out the R. Now, by distributive property, we'll have what? V minus 3. Because R times V is RV, and R times 3 is 3R. Three so now that we have R, we have one quantity in capital R in the formula, we can now get or isolate this capital R. Notice that this capital R is multiplying by the binomial V minus 3. So we can divide by V minus 3, the quantity V minus 3. Could divide over here as well, but by the quantity v minus 3. This cancels this. And so what we are we are left with is r equals vr over v minus 3. This is our solution. Okay, so what about if we were trying to find the common letter r? Hmm. Well, that's interesting. But notice, we'll do the same approach. We'll do the same approach as we actually went through. So you can just go over this video and notice how we worked right up to this point here. So I'm going to just start from that point with part two due to time. I'm going to take this portion here. So like you start over working, this is what I did earlier up to this point. So let's write that. V, come letter R equals capital R v minus 3r i notice that we actually well mm, yeah well let's do this what i'm going to do i'm going to divide by v on both sides because what this allows me to do because i notice that this v is multiplying the common r and common r is in only one place in the equation this cancels out this so we have r equals and we can actually factor out this r in the numerator we usually do that when we making the subject of the formula. Rather than having it in two places, it's looking confusing. We have the V here. So we have common R. We have common R. Let's write that neatly. So we have common R is equals to So we have common R, which is equal to this solution here. All right, let's take a look at the next question. Oh, this is a whole lot of them. Wow. Okay, so we have M, R, V, and G to make the subject. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Okay, well, I think we did something similar before. Okay, so we realized that we have yeah, we have something very similar. So all that happened is that we would have transposed this 
um, mv squared r to the other side as a minus mv squared r. So it's basically the same uh, formula that we have here. So we probably can just skip this one and go to the next one, which is what we have here. All right, so let's check that one out. Okay, so we have capital D over common D equals square root of, and we're seeing this complex um, looking uh, fraction where we're square rooting. Okay, so we want to make F the subject, but notice that we have F in two places. And so obviously we're going to have to get those two F terms together and then factor out F. So you can only have one F that we're making the subject of formula. So the first out of business is to look what's affecting this side that we're trying to get the F isolated. We we're trying to get F isolated. This side is basically affected by the square root here. It's affected, it's actually square root in the entire quantity here of the fraction. And so to get rid of the square root, since it's affecting everything else, we square root both sides. And so that leaves us with um, D to be squared over common letter D to be squared equals, and square root cancel square, so we have it F plus P over F minus P. Now, again, if we really want to get f as a subject, we need to remove this denominator here still and try to get the f terms together. So what we can do, we can actually cross multiply. Um, that's a hint as to what we can do. So we can just multiply these guys, multiply these guys, numerator denominator. So we have d squared times f minus p equals d squared times f plus p. All right, so now to get the f terms together, we need to multiply out brackets. We have d squared f minus d squared p equals d squared f plus d squared p. How we did that? Well, we use distributive law. As you can see, d squared times f is d squared f, d squared times p is d squared p, d squared times f is d squared f, and d squared times p is d squared p. But bear in mind, we're looking at the capital and the common and these. Okay, now we need to get it. We need to do what? We need to get the F terms together, the terms with F. So we can factor out F. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to subtract this term here from over here. Since it's adding to D squared P, I'm going to subtract it from this side as well. All right. And so let's look at what we have so far here. This will cancel out this. So I'm left with what? Um, D squared F minus df, as we can say, d squared f minus df, and then we have this minus d squared p. So what I need to do, I need to get rid of that from this side. So I'm going to just basically add d squared p. So this will cancel out because it's minus d squared p. By adding it, it cancels out. What we do to one side, we need to do the other side. We need to add d squared p on this side as well. All right. And so we'll end up with what? We end up on this side with what? We equal sign, of course. I want to put that equal sign. We're going to put D squared P plus capital D squared P. Now, this allows me to factor out F. So we're going to have F open bracket and then we'll put D squared minus F. And then we can actually, if we want to, we can factor out P. I think that would be cool. But although we all focus, no, I think I made a mistake here. So let's just correct that quickly. So we factor out f. By factoring f, we're going to have a d here. And now I'm saying we can actually factor out p just to make it sure it looks a little decent. We don't have to, I don't think we probably necessarily need to do that. But by practice, we tend to factor rise once we can to make things a little simpler. So in case we have to substitute, we don't have to substitute so many times. All right, so we're going to have d squared plus the capital D squared there. Check it by distributive law. P times D squared is D squared P. P times D squared, capital D, by the way, would be capital D squared P. Okay, so now we need to get this F isolated. Now, this F is actually multiplying the quantity or the binomial D squared minus D. So we're able to get rid of the quantity, the binomial, because it's multiplying F by dividing by itself. This cancels this. 
And we can do the same thing over here, divide the quantity over here by the same capital D squared minus D. Now bear in mind again that what we have here um, uh, is D squared minus D there. And up top we have a common letter where we have a capital letter here. So we really can't do anything here. Okay, so we have F equals, I'm gonna just go up here and write this as um, this F that we have remaining on this side equals P open bracket D squared plus capital D squared close bracket D squared minus D. And that's the solution. Okay, so now let's us make P the subject. Now, if I want to make P the subject, um, I look at the fact that where I'm at now, right? I'll look at the fact where I'm at now. So this is going to be the solution for, for one. I look at where I'm at now because I have a single P, right? So I can just take it from there and say, okay, well, I'm going to, let me just cancel out what I have so far. Hopefully you understood what I've done so far. All right, just making some room to simplify. Oh, what should I say? I'm making some room to make P a subject. <laughs> All right, so bear with me. Don't go as yet. Now, if you're liking the video so far, you can subscribe, you can like the video if it really proved beneficial to you. Um, so at least other persons could see the video quicker. Um, once you would have liked and shared the video, but I also just like and subscribe as well. Okay, so this is where we are so far. Now, enough for me to get P by itself, I would want to remove the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator itself. Put it over one. So that allows me, so we have two fractions, basically this fraction over here and this fraction here. What it allows me to do is to cancel out, let's say we have this bracket. So this cancels this. And what I do to this side, I must do to also do to this side as well. So we have d squared minus d. All right. And so now we have, I'm going to just write the p first. So p, open bracket, d squared plus capital D squared equals, let's write what we have over here, d squared minus d in bracket F. Okay, so now what we need to do, now again, it doesn't matter if I put the F at the end or at the beginning, um, it means the same thing, really. Okay, but by practice, let's just put the F in front, although it doesn't really matter. We're multiplying the quantity F by the quantity D squared minus D. Okay, so now we need to make D, P the subject, right? We need to make this P the subject. So we need to recognize that P here is multiplied by the binomial which is D squared plus capital D squared. Since we're multiplying in numerator, we can divide and cancel out this with this. And we're gonna do the same thing to this as well. Divide over the, the left-hand side by the same D squared minus D squared plus D squared. So we have P now by itself, since this goes itself once, equals F on top, D squared minus D, all over D squared plus D squared. Okay, and again, a common D, capital D. And this is our solution to finding P. Now remember, I start, I only start here because I already worked this portion already. So if you're in an exam and you work out this part and you work out the second part, you don't need to start from the, the scratch if you found a part while working out this where you can actually find this easier to actually manipulate. So from this stage, it was easy to find P than going right back from the start. Okay. Hope that advice was good. Let's look at the last two, or last three. Oh, we have several parts to figure out. Okay, so we're trying to make um, u the subject, so let's write that back. So v is equal to u plus at. To make u the subject, we recognize that at as a term is connected to u by addition. So we're gonna subtract at from both sides. And this cancels this, and so we have the u now u equals v minus at. Part 
one, part two. So we have v equals u plus a t. I want to make a the subject. Now not notice that a is actually tied up with t in multiplication. So it's part of a term with t. So recognize that a t is connected to u by addition. So we're going to get rid of the u first on both sides, since u is added into a t collectively. So we're going to remove the t first, because t is only multiplying a. So remove u because it's, it's added into everything else. So now we have a t equals v minus u. Now, in order for us to make uh, a the subject, we can actually, we recognize that t is connected to a by multiplication. So get rid of t by division. And so we have a equals v minus u over t. And this is our solution for, or should I say, a being the subject. And part three, to make t the subject, let's go. We're going to take v equals u plus a t. Well, we're trying to make t the subject, but recognize t is multiplying a or a is multiplying t so t is connected to a and t is only affecting a by multiplication it's not affecting the u by multiplication at all but u is being added to a t so get rid of the u first since it's affecting everything else by addition so get rid of it by subtraction do that to both sides leaving us with v minus u equals a t now we can get rid of a since a is affecting everything else on this side which is simply t but by multiplication, so we use the reverse, which is a division. So a cancels a, goes once, and we're left with t equals, and we write back this portion over the other side, which is v minus u over a. And that's it. Let's check the next question. Okay, so this involves evaluating a. Given u equals 5, v equals 18, t equals 2. But before we do that, we want to make a the subject or transpose this formula for a. Not way of saying it. So let's do the, the first part. So we have x equals u t plus half a t squared. Okay, so we recognize that the a that we're trying to find is part of a term here. So we're going to get rid of every other term first before we can find a which is part of this term. Now this term ut is adding to this quantity here so get rid of it by subtraction. But when we say adding we're not talking about this plus sign we're talking about this positive sign in front of ut because if this if we had a minus or a negative ut here we'd have to use plus ut if we had a negative ut here just saying we'd have to use plus. So it's really the sign in front of the term that we're working with. So this cancels this, and we have to subtract ut as well from the other side. So we're going to have x minus ut equals half a t squared. Okay, so now what do we do now? Okay, so my idea is to recognize that half of a t squared is the same thing as a t squared divided by 2. So I think I like to do that first, but what we can actually do we can get rid of each of these terms that are affecting a that we're trying to find. Because half, both half and t squared are multiplying a, we can get rid of any one of them at a time. Now we get rid of the two by multiplying by what? By two. Okay, so this two will cancel out this two. Remember everything here is actually multiplying, saying half times a times t squared times two. So two can cancel two. I multiply this side as well by what? By 2 as well. Right? And so 2 times this quantity, I'm going to just leave it as 2, open bracket, x minus u, t, close bracket. Okay? And then on this side, I'm left with what? The a, t squared. Now, t squared as a quantity is connected to a by multiplication, so remove it by division. Do that to both sides. And so t squared, cancel t squared, and we're left with what? A, we can rewrite it on the left hand side right away, equals 2, open bracket, x minus u t, write t with a comma, over t squared. 
and no, we don't need to get the T's together. We will focus is really on A, getting A as a subject of the formula. And this is just one quantity as a fraction, so it's fine as it is. So we know what the formula for A is, and now we can evaluate it. Although we could have evaluated just like this by putting the values for X, U, T, and make, you know, transpose until we get A. But we can just simply work with the formula since we actually have A already as a subject. So all we're going to do now is substitute quantity x. Um, we have an x here, but we weren't given a value for x. Okay, so let's see what we have. We have we have v. Okay, so I think this is where um, we have u, but we don't have x. So I'm going to just change this to an x here. Because we don't have, we don't have any v in the formula, so let's make this um, x a v, um, a v. Or should I say make this v an x? All right. So we have where we have um, x. Let's change this a bit. Change the color. So where we have v, we can put x there. Good. All right. Easy and done. Okay, so x is equal to 18. If you wonder what I, I did there, it's just that, you know, we don't have, we have v equals 18 and there's no v in the formula. So we just simply change um, the v to an x. Slight error. So ax is 18 minus u being 5. Remember, it's u times t, so it's 5 times the value of t, t which is 2 over t squared, so that's going to be 2 squared, because t is actually 2. And so this is going to be now, so what we're going to do, we're going to work within the brackets first. And we can work the denominator, which is 2 squared, which is 4. And in the bracket, we have 18 minus what? We have to work out the multiplication first before we can do subtraction, right? So it's 18 minus, collectively, 10. 5, 2 is 10. So 18 minus 10, which is really 8. So it's going to be um, 2 times 8 over 4. And we can say, okay, well, since we're multiplying these two quantities in the numerator, we can divide by the denominator. So we're going to, 4 and 4 goes once, and 4 to 8 goes twice. So 2 times 2, which is actually what? 4. So A is equal to 4. Again, this should have been x. Let's look at the next one, the final one. So make r the subject. Now this is quite straightforward. Why is that? Because r is connected to pi. You know, well, r squared is connected to pi by multiplication, and r right now is has a square on it. So before we can find r, we need to find what r squared is. So to get rid of r, to get rid of pi, we use division because pi is connected r squared by multiplication. As you can see, we have what in the, in the, in the numerator? Multiplication. So we can get rid of one of the factors by division. I'm going to get rid of the pi since we want to make r the subject. We divide over here by pi as well, so that's going to be a over pi. Now, to get rid of the square, because we want to find, want to isolate r, we need to use square root. We'll do that to both sides. A square root cancels square. And so we're left with what? r equals the square root of a over pi. So r is equal to what? a over pi. So r is equals to the square root of a being, so we need to substitute now because we're asked to evaluate r. Since we have r as subject already, we can just replace the a and the pi. So it's going to be 1, 5, 3.86. And a pi, we have there is 3.14. And so we say r is equal to the square root of, and let's divide now, 153. 
0.86 divided by 3.14. That gives us 49. And so r is equal to the square root of 49 is actually 7. All right, so assuming that's the length of a radius, of course, this is the formula for what? The area of a circle is saying the radius length from the center to the circumference is seven units. Could be seven centimeters, could be seven meters, whatever that is. So I want to simply take the positive square root since we're talking about the length. And that's it. Okay. Thank you for being patient. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.